diversifying ad channels is must, right? Um, in order to do that, you really have to understand like the small door hinges that move really big doors. And in order to do that, you need to have very clean, crispy data and know how to, how to analyze it. Welcome to Honest E-Commerce, a podcast dedicated to cutting through the BS and finding actionable advice for online store owners. I'm your host, Chase Clymer, and I believe running a direct-to-consumer brand does not have to be complicated or a guessing game. On this podcast, we interview founders and experts who are putting in the work and creating real results. I also share my own insights from running our top Shopify consultancy, Electric Eye. We cut the fluff in favor of facts to help you grow your e-commerce business. Let's get on with the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Honest E-Commerce. This episode has been a long time in the making. I can't believe it took me so long to pin you down, Max. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so I'm bringing to the show the co-founder of Triple Whale, uh, one of the leading tech startups spons- uh, specializing in direct-to-consumer SaaS measurement, data, and AI automation, Max Blank. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, yeah it's interesting that it's... Uh been a while you know that this should have happened we're both in columbus like what are the chances i know well before triple whale and before our agency electric eye existed we both knew each other uh just in the space um yeah it's 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 just wow columbus ohio is great everybody it's it's a great place to live and to work and to build a business it's underrated right which is good still you know like because it's it's not, it's not super well known and it's it's kind of like a gem you know it's it is. So let's, let's like, uh, you know, for the four people that are listening to this episode that don't know what Triple Whale is, can you give me, you know, the, the elevator pitch? Yeah. This is something we have to refine all the time, to be honest, because we're constantly like, we're constantly trying to reinvent ourselves. Um, and, and by doing that, you're bringing, you're bringing value, right? So how do you reinvent yourself constantly and have a consistent message and continue to like be on the trends and, and just continue to bring value, uh, with, with especially with the fast paceness that you're saying with like, AI and what's going on with data and how do you really bring it together? So what we're really aiming to be is the backbone of data measurement, BI analytics for DDC brands. And really we aim to serve the startup all the way to an IPO. And, and we have that infrastructure to do that. And especially with Triple Whale, with the, with the newest edition of Triple Whale that's rolling out now that has you know been out for a bit now, but it really allowed us to, um, to deliver on that, right? we kind of re-engineered our entire platform to go beyond attribution, um, double down on attribution, bring in some uh, some more like non-deterministic attribution as well, MMM things like this. Uh, go deeper on our MTA product as well, um, but then also bring in some really robust capabilities for for BI, um, for data, for owning your own data, really being a central source of truth for the an entire infrastructure that you need um, to, to really grow as a DVC brand. That's a lot there. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, no, 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 absolutely. But I think one thing I want to highlight here, and it's I, I, I loved this ever since I, I... Well, I think it was funny, funny enough, it's the last time I bumped into you was at that event up in Toronto um, yeah. f- at Shopify's kind of uh, event. And Toby was on stage talking about how Shopify wants to solve most problems for most merchants. And that is the the line in the sand that they draw as as what they're going to do and bake into their product, and then that ex, that just opens up the app ecosystem and shows their commitment to those types of partners. Whereas, I I talk to a lot of brands often about Shopify's analytics, and I say it depends on your goals, but I would say almost every Shopify product. That's baked in, leaves something to be desired. There are some things they're really good at, but I would say analytics is one of the things where everyone's just like, we use something else. Yeah. I think as, as the business grows and scales, like needs become a bit more bespoke too, right? It's hard to kind of have it out of the box. Um, and so Shopify leaves that door open for guys like, like Triple Whale, right? For, for us. And so, you know, and also the unifying of, of multiple data sets whether it coming from different integrations you may have, you know, as, as businesses grow and we see this and we, we, you know, we have a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, um, data to kind of like empower us to understand the life cycles of brands. And you can see it, you know, you got brands that are just getting started that are trying to, you know, find their products and their product market fit and, they get to about a million dollars, let's say, in that area, right? They need they, they they would be fine with a limited, you know, 
analytics that comes with Shopify and they're not super diversified in their ad spends. And so they, they can kind of get by with that. But as you start to kind of break through and you start bringing in, you know, beyond meta, cause everyone starts with meta, right? And then you, you, you know, then you're going to bring in Google, you know, the next step. And then it'll start bringing in, um, TikTok's probably the next one you're going to do. And then you're going to cover all your bases, Pinterest, uh, Snapchat. You, you're going to want to go everywhere. So but as you kind of go everywhere with your ad spends, you need a consolidated view and you need deeper insights in your business. And so that's, that's really what we're trying to bring is to bring that almost like a bespoke offer, which is really tough to do at scale. But we, we, when we re-engineered the platform, we, the reason why we um, sought out to kind of double down on BI is that as our customers grew, like they kept asking us for things we didn't have. Like we had very limited views on data and they're like, well, oh, I could really love to see it like this. And, you know, I have a subscription box and we have like unique intervals of renewal. Like maybe you could buy it once a quarter or once a year or twice a year, or twice a year, not once a year, but twice a year. And, and so our out of the box solution just didn't have that. And in order to really get more bespoken custom, you have to stand up you know, a robust sort of like data platform. And our goal with our, with our new platform is to, is to be that for you, whether you know how to manipulate data or architect data on your own, or if you need us to do it for you, like they're, we're, we're basically able to provide data insights in, in, on your business for any, any type of e-commerce business. Absolutely. And obviously, you guys are doing some amazing things these days. But take me back to the humble beginnings. Let's talk about <laughs> the, 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 you know, the idea, the, the why this exists. Yeah. I'd say about eight years ago is when I really got into e-commerce. Um, and before that, like, I always was dabbling in some type of entrepreneurship going on, right? I caught the entrepreneurship bug my last year of college. And halfway through that, I'm like, why did I just pay for five years of college or four and a half years of college. <laughs> now I realize that, you know, with the internet, you have access to labor and, you know, different things that you can build and sell. And I'm like, whoa, you know, the whole world up and up. So I was really out of the end of college. I, I got heavy into entrepreneurship and did a few different startups and things like that. It wasn't until about eight years ago that I came across um, a group of people that wanted me to build them websites because I had a bit of a digital like sort of, you know, agency going on. Um, and the, the, these, uh, this network that I had kind of developed, they were all Amazon sellers. And they wanted, they all had like nightmare experiences of like only being on Amazon and then kind of not having control of their own de destiny in a sense, right? You could be shut down or deranked and things like that. And they wanted to get into the Shopify game, but it's just an entirely different game, right? Uh, and so they, they brought me on to build the websites to to help them start that. And so through that journey of working with them, they already had an Amazon business. I built them Shopify websites. And um, then they're like, okay, well, we need to run ads. I'm like, I don't know how to do that. Like, well, you could probably figure it out. So I think a handful of clients that just like paid me to figure out how to run ads. And so turn to YouTube, right? Turn to where, wherever you would turn to to learn, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it was like Ezra Firestone's courses or whatever mastermind group I, I found at the time. And started to learn ads and it started working for some of these sites and dri driving them traffic. And then I'm like, uh, I, I saw the potential. And so I, I started my own sites and early on the connected Oberlo you know, via AliExpress. I'm like that, that, that was like my sandbox to play and to learn how to build an e-commerce uh, brand, you know? So it was really started with drop shipping. And um, that's like where I started my career in, in e-commerce and built a few stores. Um, one of which was like a boutique for women's jewelry and handbags. And I remember that one had no idea really what I was doing at all. And just testing, like you would, you would set up like, you know, five new products a day based on trends on the internet. You'd have an out. Yeah. I had like a team over, you know, overseas that would set up the ads for me and I would just watch them and you'd go through five or 10, five or 10 a day with a small budget back in the day, you could make some dents and then one would like catch, you know, and so that, that first store was like my experience setting up that system, understanding D2C, understanding direct response. Um, that, that store ended up scaling very quickly. Like so up until September of 2016, I had done like a hundred grand on that store from that entire year. And then I had one ad that hit that October. So Q4, right? It went to $500,000, right? And then it went to 1.2 during November and it was all drop shipped from 
Oberlo and AliExpress and whatever. It was a nightmare. I had to jump on a plane to China and like work out stuff with my suppliers and throw stuff on a speedboat and get it here in time for uh, the holiday season. Um, and that was a, a fun experience. Um, so that, that was my first run at getting into e-commerce. And that was a store that lasted like two years. I ended up selling it at a loss because I got into all sorts of like debt trying to manage, bring inventory over to uh, warehouse it here, stop like actually drop shipping and control the customer experience and keep customers long term. You can't really do that by drop shipping uh, in that way back then. Um, ended up selling that. And then I started another one shortly after my wife actually had an idea of these braids, pre-braided hair braids um, that were like sort of trendy. And so we started a store and um, women's hair accessories is my wife's idea. I had no idea. And, and it ended up working. It ended up scaling pretty, pretty rapidly. Um, the, the original target audience is a funny story for people that appreciate like direct response, um, like direct response and, and this ad buying. The, the original target of that store was actually uh, Orthodox Jewish women who they cover their hair. And so we, we found a website that sold accessories and fashion to that cohort. It's a very small cohort, like in New York, right? Um, but we had our pixel on our site. So that, that site would actually send us traffic. It wasn't like a marketplace. We bought ads daily and I just retargeted them on Facebook and Instagram, but I loaded up the pixel. And at some point, my wife was like, I'm seeing these things everywhere. Let's try to go broad. So we took that pixel data from that site, from that cohort, made it all look like audiences and, you know, I think year one, we did about 50,000. Year two, we did about two and a half million. And it was from that original cohort of data. Um, but so during this experience, I'm scaling this. You know, we set up influencer programs. We're sourcing, you know, at UGC for our ads, uh, set up manufacturing, was not drop shipping, did the whole thing, had packaging, did the whole thing right, you know, um, running that whole, you know, had success, had customer success, had uh, procurement, the whole nine yards. And every good, you know, uh, I think owner operator has their credit card game, their credit card points game worked out, right? Um, every dollar you're spending, you're getting one or two points, which one, are, whichever one you have. So I would like to travel with my family, right? I'd like to take my kids, take my wife on during the holiday seasons or wh wherever we would go. But when you're, when you're abroad and you're traveling around, like you can't open up all your screens and see like, where am I at? What's my ROAS? Things like that. And so I really just wanted a concise sort of dashboard in my pocket where I can like see the metrics that matter most, right? What's my ROAS? What's my spend right now? The Facebook mobile app for, for ads is like the worst experience. Oh, it was. Shopify doesn't have the whole story, right? So like, this is where I'm like, I need to make an aggregated, like simple app. Like, I just want to do that, you know? And um, that was really the inception of the, of, uh, of Triple Well, the idea was through that experience. And so I built it for, the idea was to build it for myself. And I always, you know, I'm entrepreneurial. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to get this thing working. We'll try to make it a business out of it at some point. Um, but I struggled with doing two things at once. So like, it was like all about timing for me. I'd say like in, in 2019, um, my co-founder, AJ, he and I had known each other for a while already. We kind of stayed in touch. He was in Israel. I was over here in Ohio. Um, he was big into startups and tech, always, always into that. And whenever we talked, it was always about like tech and the future and, you know, AI and things like that. At some point in 2019, he was coming off of the startup. Um, he and his co-founder, Ivan, who's now that's the three of us, right? Um, I was over in Israel and I met them in a, in a coffee shop one, one day and I was talking about e-commerce and it's working. It's amazing. And AJ is like, what, what can we do? How can we work together? So I, I paid them to build this first version of Triple Whale, you know, um, and it, they got started. In the meantime, AJ needed, a, it needed a job essentially. Like, what's this next thing he's going to do? So he started working for me, apprenticing, like, how do I run ads and teach him and train him? And we worked really well together. And 2019, he actually moved to Columbus with his family and we worked full time on Madison Braids. It was he and I and our wives. We were running this brand together. Um, and then COVID hits and we hit a tear, right? Everyone did COVID 2020 when they shut everything down and CPMs were super cheap, right? So we were able to scale Madison in that 12 year, that 12 month period of time. I think we scaled it to like $7 million it was amazing, right? Like out of our garage, essentially. And then fast forward a little bit, Triple Oil's on the side. They kind of built something, but we were focused on one thing at one time, which was e-commerce. Uh, but then when COVID ended, essentially, and everything opened back up, well, CPMs went through the roof. My AOV on Madison Bridge was like 58 bucks. I, I couldn't support it anymore. It wasn't enough. So mm -hmm. I kind of had to take a pause and like re-engineer the business, maybe get some uh, other product in. At that point, I'm like, AJ, why don't you just run with Triple, uh, with triple Wheel full force? 
I took like a few months to re-figure out Madison Braids. He finished the product and got our first beta users on it. And then people just like essentially ripped it out of our hands and just wanted to use Triple Whale. Very quickly, we had about, we had like hundreds of people using Triple Whale. Some not even paying because it was just like free, like just try it, you know? And then, and it, it very quickly just like blasted off. I dropped everything with Madison Braids and jumped full time into Triple Whale. And AJ, Yvonne, and I, we basically incorporated the company in like June of 2021, I think. Yeah. When was the, when was that big iOS and like attribution hiccup? Probably six months later. Yeah. And so we were, we, all we had was like that summary page product that people I think love. And that was growing pretty wild. We, we had raised our first rounds, like about 4 million bucks just off that with early adopters, um, some influencers. And then we, we, we raised a small seed round also from a, a very prestige um, fund out of, out of Israel. That was awesome. But that was before we had the Pixel. That thing was blasting off, you know? But then came iOS 14.5. We had, we started expanding the team on the engineering side. You know, first thing we did and grab some buddies to work for us, to run CS with us, like just people, like our friends. You know, that's what you do when you first get started, right? And then we, we started building this Pixel because, you know, many reasons. So our clients were asking, what are we going to do in iOS 14.5? Like, what are we going to do as a company? What are they going to do as customers? We didn't really, we had a way to like see your aggregate numbers, but we couldn't get you like sort of the granularity on the campaign level you needed to understand what's going on. That That's when we started to say, okay, you know, if someone was going to disrupt us, they would build a solution to this. And then also if we wanted to like really execute on the vision, which was to do more with data, more with AI, more with automation, we need, we need like reliable data from, the ad platforms, what you're getting from them now is it's not going to be reliable. So we made the decision to like, to build a pixel, to build our, you know, our, basically our, our data resolution product, which is behind it, right? The pixel. <coughs> and we actually pre-sold it. I remember we took like a page out of the old e-com like pre-sell book and we pre-sold it to the current customers and we did a launch on Twitter. And that was a crazy time. It was with like Raba. The whole crew was like assembled then. Mm-hmm. That was fun. That was early days. We went from like, 50k of MRR to like the month later it was like 300 <laughs> just by pre-selling that thing. Then we launched it, and then we, very soon after that we were raised a Series A, and then add more product, add more product, and then Series B, and now now we've got about like 26,000 stores use Triple Whale right now, and uh, Shopify's behind us. And that's wild. When when did yeah when did Shopify come into the picture? Obviously they were the a key partner for the product, but yeah, they got, they got involved. Like I think we did that in 2022, January time, possibly. Yeah, they've been awesome. They're awesome. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, I think it was with three months after Sean and I started the agency, we just yeah, ig- we just ignored every other platform. We're like, there's just something special about Shopify and the partner ecosystem here. I know people's names. They're very nice to us. Like they, everyone wants to help everyone. There's rising tides raising all ships around here. 100%. This is a cool place. And that's how the company, and that's how they are inside too. Like that, it's just not only is that like what they've created with their partners, but the people inside the company are 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 really awesome. Absolutely. I like first of all that the story is amazing. But let's let's now circle back. You guys have sure. this amazing mature product. You're adding some new features and functionality to it. Um, you mentioned earlier some stuff about what you're doing with premium and business anal- uh, business insights. Uh, what like if you were talking to a customer right now who is like thinking about it, you know, what are some of the things that you'd want to point out? Be like, these are the cool things that our customers are using from our product. There's a lot. Like one thing we do is build. There's a lot of vectors, right? Like there, there is our new, like there's our, our, our GPT product essentially, which is like, it's, it's called Moby, right? I'm sure a lot of people have seen it and it, it is, I'll say a word, but it's not like going to do it justice until you actually play with it. But you could just say it's chat GPT with your data. Yeah. But it, it is chat GPT with your data, right? Like it really knows your business and it can serve insights. You can ask it questions. You can reason with it. You can brainstorm with it. You can create new copies for your ads with it. You can create metrics to measure things in your business. Like you can actually create template. You can create like BI visualizations, tables, graphs, charts with it and then save it and send it out to your team to monetize and or to, uh, to operationalize. 
we were just jamming on ChatGPT before the call, right? Um, yeah, we were. It, you really can. I'm sure you, you you're asking business questions all the time to ChatGPT about your business, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to feed it the context, right? Like it doesn't have all the context. Yeah, I told you before this. I had to. I built my own GPT, right? And I trained it on like all the SOPs that we had at the business, and that took some time. Which is amazing. So all the integrations that you connect to TripleWell now go into Moby. Okay, has access to all that data. And you can chat with it. You can ask it questions. You can create like sequences of questions that lead to outcomes, right? Like, you know, when you, when you have like a canvas, right? You, you get you like a paralysis. You don't know what to put on that canvas. There's just so much opportunity, yeah. right? So we run into that with Moby because like, it's like, yeah, you can do anything you want. Then it's like, well, what do I do with it? So we had to kind of create curated paths of like getting value from it. So if you log into Moby right now, it's going to have your store's data right behind it, obviously. It's going to say... um, Chat GP, the power of chat GPT with your data. And then it's below it is a the trending questions that people are asking from across our community, like different cuts of data that you wouldn't think of even asking, right? Like you can do like a CTR analysis. You can do Google analytic type things inside of it because it just has everything, right? We've built the infrastructure to, you could create visualizations that would replace GA4, right? We haven't been able to take this story out yet because it's just, there's so much that can happen. We're in the middle of like, writing this story and, and shaping those journeys. Mm -hmm. um, you could create CRO. You're talking about CRO a little bit ago with me, right? Yep. You can create landing page analysis that can help with like CRO type questions. Um, you can ask it to forecast revenue because we've incorporated models from Facebook and Google on like MMM, first of all. So you can do MMM type questions that people have. You can ask revenue forecasting, inventory forecasting using like validated models that Google and, and all the you know all the big tech players use and trust with ways to to validate them as well with historical and uh, it's really a platform that can that can it's it's like an infinite machine. Um, so that, that's one thing. That, it, it takes time. You have to learn how to prompt it properly. Um, there are still some rough edges, but they're getting better and better. And the more data we have, uh, the better it gets too from your store. So that's one thing. And that, that is super exciting. Okay. People come to us today for attribution and, and BI. They don't, they don't necessarily come to us today to like chat with their data. But once they taste it and they feel it, they understand it, they get leverage. Like chat GPT and these things, they just give you leverage. This thing gives you a ton of leverage of accessing data and, and understanding your business. Another thing that like we built this for, one of the questions that would always come to our success team. It's like, well, I have all this data, but like, what, what do I do with it? You know, it's like a paralysis, analysis paralysis, right? So if you go into Triple Well today, you've, you've got a series of dashboards, right? You have to know what to do with them, you know, and, and we have tips and, and things to help you. And, and people just learn it through, they, they learn it through their experiences as, as in being, being an ad buyer, right? But we did bring Moby inside the dashboard too, and you can just generate like conversation with it. It can talk to you. You can talk to it about the context of that dashboard right there. What's performing well, what's not, what should I watch? You know, if I look for X, Y, and Z in my ad performance, what should I look at right now? Right? Like if I, like when you're, when you're like in the ads manager, you're like, I'm going to look back seven days. I'm going to look back five days, three days. I'm going to look at ROASs and CTRs and things like that. You can have it do that for you and serve those ads directly to you to look at and analyze. Um, so, I mean, I think the, the, the next step with Moby, once we have all the data and the experience really tight is like, can it action stuff for you based off of things you want it to do? And like these, you know, I've always had a level of like skepticism with AI. Like for like, you know, 10, 12 years, you're hearing like, oh, we got AI in our product, you know? And there's always like ad products out there too that had like AI or, or you know, in the DTC world. It wasn't until you saw chat GPT that you're like, oh, wow, you know? Yeah. And then that, that sort of became real. And you're like, whoa. So we went all in on that thing. Okay. So that, that you got to try. You got to try it. I'm going to give you an account after this, Chase. You're going to try it. Oh, I love it. Um, Okay, then, then the, the next thing that we have, um, which is, which is huge, right? Is, uh, sonar, which is, which is enriching. It's taking the, the pixel data, which is enriched customer journey data that is tying to, you know, where you're spending on ads. But now it's like, can we feed that back into the platforms and enrich data in platforms? So increasing the quality of audiences inside ad platforms, inside ESPs, like Clavio, right? So that you can specifically, like I'd say for like Clavio, like we can enrich flow, flow audiences. So you can make sure you're hitting more people that are already on your list, but due to whatever, maybe if they logged in from another IP or they're using a different email address, but the same person, they've already opted in. You can, you have the opportunity to send them a message. So 
you know, there's, there's a lot of providers out there and we, we have the best pixel and identity resolution product out there. So we just, we, we built that. And now that for sure is like a no brainer. You got to get, you can make incremental new revenue day one. And then there's just added business intelligence. We have a whole template library that is, uh, you can flip on, you can like go through it and add it to your plan and you can see it. And um, it's different cuts of data and it's community sourced. And from our team, and, and now we're getting with influencers and people in the space that just like look at data differently, you know, like how should a business look at these metrics? And so we have a template library, think Notion, right? But mm -hmm. for DTC metrics. So that's huge. Um, I, I know I'm, I'm missing something, but there's, there's a lot, you know. Oh, absolutely. And there's not enough time in the world, yep. especially when we just want to... I talked a lot, man. <laughs> no, no, no. It's perfectly fine. And I know this episode, people are going to love it. And I'll have you back on next year and we'll talk about some new new cool things. But I will give you like parting words. Is there anything I didn't ask you about or something that you want to make sure you mention before we go today? I mean, just an overall trend that we're seeing, just to kind of put it out there for the audience, like, you know, diversifying ad channels is must, right? Um, in order to do that, you really have to understand like the small door hinges that move really big doors. And in order to do that, you need to have very clean, crispy data and know how to how to analyze it. And so that's what we built. And I just think that that's a, it's a message that's going to be, become more and more necessary to hear in the space that if we were all performance marketers before, we got to lean a little bit, a little bit heavier into now data and data analysis. And with tools like Mobi and GPTs and things like that, it's going to make it easier. Absolutely. Max, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me. I'm glad we got to do it. We can't thank our guests enough for coming on the show and sharing their knowledge and journey with us. We've got a lot to think about and potentially add into our own businesses. You can find all the links in the show notes. You can subscribe to the newsletter at honestycommerce.co to get each episode delivered right into your inbox. If you're enjoying this content, consider leaving a review on iTunes that really helps us out. Lastly, if you're a store owner looking for an amazing partner to help you get your Shopify store to the next level, reach out to Electric Eye at electriceye.io. Until next time.